Well, it's a new day. With a new day comes a new project, I guess. Uh, this truck does not belong to me. I'll make sure I point that out to begin with. This belongs to a friend of mine. This is an old Peterbilt 349. It's got a big Cam Cummins, 9-speed, tandem axle, Peterbilt, air leaf suspension. was originally a day cab uh, road tractor with a fifth wheel, but the fifth wheel's been removed, and they put this bed on here. And they put some weight on it because I used to use it as a plow truck. If you're making the connection here, this is this is the friend of mine that has the other truck that he paid the guy to do all the work to, stretch a frame and all that. Um, it was an identical truck to this. After we're done with this, we're going to bring the other one in. We're going to tear it all down back to what this was before that guy touched it, and we'll start over. So what we have to do here is we're adding, we're putting a tank on this. The tank itself is 20 feet long we have 12 foot to the back of this frame so i need to add 10 feet of frame for the tank itself and then there's two foot of where the equipment goes so that won't be a concern as far as weight goes when i did my calculations what i'm looking for is from the back of the cab to the center of the duels i want it to be 60 percent of the total tank length so what that ends up being means that that front drive needs to go where this one is, and this one needs to go back here, and then we have enough room for a lift axle behind it. That's the idea. So what we need to do is get this bed off, get snow plow off, strip all the suspension off, strip the, the frame clean, because we're going to stretch this frame the way that I think it should be done. Um, I rarely ever show framework because there's so many people out there that hear you can't weld to a frame. You can't drill a frame. It's just simply not the case. There are frames that are not supposed to be cut and welded. This is not one of them. Um, and not only that, the guidelines say that it should be done according to the manufacturer's recommendations. That doesn't mean that that's how you have to do it, because you can do it better than that. But you have to do it to a certain minimum level. And welding on extension, stretching this frame, when it's done properly is never a problem. It just has to be done right. Without further ado, time to get this thing off and uh, get to work. All right, so the snow plow's off, the flatbed's off. The next thing is the hitch has to come off, which means the wiring's got to come loose and the air lines for the trailer brakes. Uh, this truck will never pull a trailer again, so we will take this stuff off. We'll end up pulling the plumbing back up and find out where they took where the protect, uh, tractor protection valve is, and we'll plug it off right there. So, that being said, I guess we'll unbolt this here. That hitch plate's welded to the frame right in here, so I imagine it's welded on both sides. Yes, it is. So we're just going to unbolt it here, and I'm probably going to cut the frame just like so. I'll plasma cut that, I believe. We'll see how it goes.
All right, now that we've got the back hitch off, next thing we need to do is remove all the plumbing from the frame. We can leave the plumbing on the differentials, but it needs to come off of this frame. This was kind of a, a bummer. This is where they put a liner because of the uh, torque arm. There's so much pressure right there and uh, you get some rust jacking in here. So our new liner we put in will extend past where these are so it won't be a big deal. You can see how that liner goes right up into this area, but you can see that rust jacking. We'll have to see what that looks like under there. Um, but regardless, it's not a bad day. Let's get it apart. All right, so the rear drive is out. We're gonna continue taking this apart, get this bump stop out. Look at how much rust jacking's in there. I expect to see some thin spots on there. I think there was, we found some on this side. Not really much. I mean, it's a little bit, but nothing, nothing significant. Um, however, the track bar, tra uh, radius arm, whatever you wanna call it, uh, comes across here, mounts here, and this is part of it. You can see how uh, how bad that is. So I'll have to have that. And both the rear airbags are bad. After we took them apart and looked at them, we need both of them. So we're probably looking at four airbags, four shocks. Um, that bracket. The front leaf spring bushing on this side after we get it all apart we found that that bushing needs replaced and the saddle on this rear axle is broken this saddle's broken you can't see it right now so i got a block in there holding the holding it up but it's broke um you know, these are just the old truck blues, man. You just, you just can't do, you know, a major, major uh, overhaul on something like this and not run into the stuff. There's a shock mount. Somebody made these. Well, they're they're rotted out, so those need repaired. Both of them are the same way, so that's got to be fixed. So I have to plate steel that or cut it out or something. See how much rust is on there? Wow, yeah, look at that. That's how much. Oh boy. How thin that is. What's this look like here? Missing a little, but not horrible. Okay, We got the class member out that went here. She's trying to get that out, but it's pretty rusted in there. Jeez. Yeah. You know what, I was really stuck in there. We had to heat it up to get it to come out, and you like pound the heck out of it. Yeah, some... That's not good. See that layer right there? Mm -hmm. You know what that's going to turn into? No. Probably a hole. Oh, I should have got a ball peen hammer. <laughs> Welcome to the rust. Let's get a ball pin hammer and get in that corner, see what it feels like, see if it's thin or not. 
when I beat all that rust out of there, took a ball peen hammer and went in here and got it all out. And I was looking it over real good. The only spot that has any real pitting is right in this area right here. And I don't think it's enough that I'm too concerned, especially since our splice is going to be back here and our liner is going to go from this point clear up in front of this because this will be the the front axle which is here it's going to move back to here our liner i was planning on going a couple feet in front of it um so that won't be a big deal i'm not too concerned um what i am concerned with is we have the front drive has the pan hard bar track bar and it has that stiffener liner in it as well and look at the rust jacking on that I don't know what we're going to find behind there, but I'm sure it's going to be more of the same, if not worse. So I just got off the phone with the third um, shop that can actually make these inserts um, for this truck. I had them quote them as 27 feet long, which would be from the back of the leaf spring hanger on the steer axle all the way to the very end. That's what it would be. Um, two of them are local to me. One's not. The best price was $2,200 for each rail insert, um, and the highest price was $3,300. And uh, <laughs> the $3,300, I don't know if they were quoting punching the holes in it or not, but it, it doesn't matter because the, the big obstacle with them is the, the one is six months out, uh, and they're the closest to me. Um, they're six months out. The next closest one's nine months, and then the other one, which is the most the farthest away, is 14 months out. So we're going to have to figure out something else, some other way we can add some strength. And we're adding strength because of we're changing something. So the 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 vulnerable part of this chassis is from that leaf spring hanger to the rear leaf spring hanger of the steer axle and in here is a little less than nine feet okay so this truck is designed to carry a load in that span and not not deflect too badly and not get damaged not break not crack so when we move this axle from this point what four feet is that we're moving it let's see let's measure i should have measured that before i told said anything 52 inches so we are effectively adding about 50% more length in here. So we're almost, not quite doubling, but one and a half times. We have one and a half times that distance that we used to have. So that makes this, this belly as we call it, a little more susceptible to, to twist, to flex, to cracking, all that stuff. So we would like to improve upon the strength of this. So I think the plan is to move, just move the truck back to the garage door and then it's going to take the, the other axle out, I think. reason for doing what he's doing. I just don't remember what it is. I, I try to not ask too many questions. So, why are you moving this back to the door? Move it back here. I'm going to leave the axle here, lift up the frame, and then shove the truck forward. Oh, yeah. So, we can put our jack stands. Okay. All right, I'll get the impact. Everything on this truck has been a fight.
Okay, so now what's going to happen is I lift this, the front's going to want to fall down. So I need to get a cribbing underneath that. Okay. Go up there? Do you want me to go up there? Yeah, I gotta get this that Okay. So we got the jack stands under it and the frame leveled up. This is that broken saddle, he calls it, uh, on this side. It's broke pretty bad. That axle came out pretty easy, uneventful. A little bit of pitting here, nothing substantial, nothing I'm worried about, same thing here. The other side of the frame is just the same. The next thing we need to do is get this cross member out. It needs to come out because we need to get that liner out. When I looked at this truck, I told him we got some rust jacking between the liner on that side and this side, and I'm worried about what's underneath it. I'm, I'm definitely concerned. So you can see in here, turn some light on. You can see how much rust jacking is in there. Now the likeliness I'm going to take that apart, and we're going to have some thin spots on the frame. It's pretty likely. I, I hate it. I hate it, but it's very possible. But you know, the, we can't build on top of this not investigating. Um, I'm not willing to just turn a blind eye to it. Whatever's there has to be addressed. And if it's too thin, you know, maybe we need to talk about the possibility of a cutoff and doing something different back here. Um, we'll just have to see. I'm not sure yet, but um, we'll start getting this cross member out of here and work on getting that out and we'll see what we got. Or not. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's loosening up. This is what I'm concerned with right here. Look at this. We got to make sure we got to decide if this is 
that metal from the liner or from the frame. So we took a needle scaler and cleaned this all up and then took a wire wheel after that and you can see this is where the liner ended on this side and they see that really predominant line where the pitting is. Uh, there's a lot of material missing right there and right on the bottom flange you can see it right there. Um, it also gets thin down here where the airbag mount was. It gets a little thin. The upper flange is actually in really nice shape. It wasn't bad, even for all the rust jacking there was. But right here, where the liner ended, you can see this, this line of pitting here. It's almost straight up and down. You can see how much material's missing there. That could most certainly be a, a place where it would fail and it could crack. Um, so we know we gotta put a liner in. We keep talking about this, just uncertain if it's just a liner, if it's a liner and outside. So what I would like to do, well, here's what we're doing. We've, we've taken the, the battery box off, uh, the wet air tank, we've taken off the um, primary and secondary air tank on this side, removed the air dryer and removed the fuel tank because we're either putting a liner inside or we're putting a double frame outside one or the other and it means this whole frame's got to be cleaned off all the way into here because this is how far we're going the steering gearbox mounts right here i don't want to dismount that i don't want to disturb it we're coming right in here and these two bolts here are kind of on a little bit of an angle um that's how we'll run our double frame whether it's inside or outside we'll make it come up to here that'll be our first uh, mechanical connection there and then we'll cut that frame on an angle. I never put my double frame straight up and down or a liner at a splice or anything like that because the way I understand it is when you do, when you put a liner or double, double frame on and you stack, you have the cut straight, you have that compression on the top and the bottom working at the same place where if you offset your cut at an angle, now this compression here is working on one part and it's here and it spreads that compression across the frame a little farther. So that's the plan there. This truck needs a clutch, so now would be a great time to pull that transmission out, go ahead and put a clutch in. Not only is it, you know, I've got all the tanks out of the way, I got the fuel crossover line out of the way, drive shafts out of the way, we're halfway there. Shifter, a little bit of wiring, I don't know if it has a cooler on it or not. Um, clutch linkage, bell housing bolts, she's ready to come out. I mean, unless I forgot something, of course. but. There's no better time to do that clutch than right now. I mean, we're so far into it. Um, we're getting ready to, well, also, it'd be nice to take that clutch down too because that hydraulic leak is up on this side, tucked up in the frame rail, and the transmission makes it very difficult to get in there.
right, now that's out, we will uh, inspect the input shaft, make sure there's no edges worn off or thin spots or twists in the splines or, you know, the input shaft with the pilot bearing rides. Make sure that's not worn. The clutch brake isn't too bad. We'll put a new bearing in the input shaft and replace if we need to. Now, this truck, when it sat at idle, when it was running, um, you could hear this throwout bearing making all kinds of racket. Um, you could put grease to it, and it would, it would quiet it down for a few minutes, and, and then it would just come back. So it really didn't matter how much life is left on the clutch because that bearing's um, not long for this world. But we'll get that out of there next. But look how much easier it'll be to get into that frame now with that transmission out of the way to do what we got to do. Plus, we could take care of another problem. So it's a win-win. Clutch is out, so we are done with this part of the video. Next video, we'll be working on the frame. Uh, we need to stretch the frame, and um, we need, if you don't remember, we've got to add 10 feet to it. All right, so here's where we're at. we got to stretch the frame. We need to add strength to the frame because our wheelbase was from here to right here, and now we have actually made it 1.5, you know, 50% longer of a wheelbase because it's in here, and I just don't think this is enough structurally to support what we're going to put in there and the thing is i don't want to go back after this is built and then the owners say yeah i think we need to add something because my frame's bent or it's tweaked or it's cracked or it's broken we're not going to do that so we're going to take care of the problem now so we have several options uh probably the most uh, the, the the absolute best what i what i think would be the best option would be to completely remove these frame rails from the truck unbolt everything slide them out order up new stronger thicker um, better frame rails new ones put them in place but have them made to where they're the extra 10 feet that we need slide them in place bolt everything back together and do the same thing for both sides and then also put uh, uh, maybe an outer l frame on top of that Take old truck frame, bring it down here, cut the bottom off, and then just bolt it all through. That would be the most, most desirable to me. Uh, the second most desirable would be leave this frame here, have a liner made substantially thicker, stronger, that would go inside this, just like what we took out over here, but have it made to where it goes from the flywheel housing mounts right here all the way to the back including the extra 10 feet that we need because then if we did that and it went beyond there we could splice on truck frame here weld this together and then this becomes less critical because we're using that inner liner um, for so much of the integrity it's providing so much strength and so much integrity this isn't such a big deal and then that can run out uh, the problem with those two options is one is cost two is um time it's at least six months to get those pieces in one piece uh, we've been able to locate two different places that can that have this readily available in pieces but if i'm going to piece something i might as well piece what we have there's no sense in piecing brand new stuff it doesn't, doesn't seem right to me <clears throat> now we're on the third option third option is to take this frame cut it off right here do away with that frame, bring in a truck cutoff, and weld it to here all the way up around. And as, let's touch on this real quick, some, and I'll be brief. Some guys like to do this, some guys like to do this, some guys like to do this. Doesn't matter to me how you do it. Um, I would like to do it like this. I just think that if you're going to weld it, I like to have as much weld surface as I can get. That's all the reason I do it that way. Um, I also like the fact that the load is sitting on top of each other. That's all. Um, so I thought if we splice it here, we'll have a liner made for the inside. That liner, we'd bring it out to this area here. Let it catch all these bolt holes because we need to use all those for what goes on the truck. We can catch two on either side of the splice here. 
We need those, we need those. And then we have another cross member right here. So we can bring our liner into this area. We can come into here, these are fuel tanks. So run that liner in there to back up our weld and then entertain the idea again of the used truck frame like this as an L, cut the bottom off, run it from up here all the way to the back beyond here the extra 10 feet and then i think i'd be i think i'd be happy with that i think that would be adding this would add quite a bit of strength considering we have going to have so many bolts holding it together um probably only really needed to run that frame to this point maybe to the front leaf spring hanger but <clears throat> if we have it i think i'd just rather run it the rest of the way out but those are the options. We've looked at several different options, like other cutoffs that would slide inside this frame, like we could cut it, slide it inside, and then just add another layer on the outside. But everything we found that measured outright was old, rusty, crusty, you know, more of the same what we have here. So I think this is where we're headed, right here. I think this is what we're gonna do. But if you've thought of some idea that I have not, leave it in the comments, because I'm not gonna start this for a day or two, I got something else cooking I got to take care of and uh, <clears throat> that give me some time to read because I'm sure there's a lot of guys who've done this before done it a lot and know some tips and tricks for me um, I'm not worried about the alignment part of it getting the frame rails straight together I'm just more concerned about uh, any other options besides something I've I've said here but anyways that's it for now hope you guys enjoyed and catch you on the next one